My name is Vasim Khan and I'm an author. If you're viewing this video, then, like me, you have questions about the current debate around diversity in literature. You may be looking for information to help you understand that debate a little better. You may be looking for ways that you can help address the problem. Or, and let's be honest about this, you may simply be lost in the fog of confusion and anger that sometimes surrounds this subject. If so, you're not alone. Not too long ago, I wrote a blog piece about cultural appropriation. The piece I wrote, whilst acknowledging that people from any given culture have the right to take offence at the inappropriate borrowing of elements from their culture, also made the point that we should apply a measured approach to such issues. We now live in a world where it is increasingly difficult to navigate the political minefield of what may or may not cause offence. This applies doubly so to artistic content because of the way it cuts across society. Authors, publishing industry professionals and readers are being asked to consider, on a daily basis, issues that involve diversity. A particularly contentious topic is when authors write characters not from their own cultural identity or ethnicity. The fact is that writers borrow from other cultures and experiences all the time. My own feeling is that this is perfectly valid. The point of being an author is to create worlds populated by characters that intrigue us. In other words, I believe that all authors should have the right to write whatever they choose. To suggest that authors can only write characters that mirror themselves would pretty much kill off fiction overnight. It's also equally valid for authors to write only about lives for which they have a lived experience. That is, to stick to characters from their own background. I don't believe authors should be pressured into shoehorning diverse characters into their books simply because it might be deemed politically expedient in the current climate. Character should always serve the story and the author's creative instinct. The blog piece I wrote was read by thousands of people around the world. I was surprised to receive a lot of email from authors of all backgrounds, white and non-white authors, unpublished and established authors, as well as many industry professionals who all had similar feelings. Namely, that there's a lot of sound and fury surrounding the topic of cultural appropriation, but very little in the way of actual concrete advice. This project, comprising a series of five videos, and a corresponding written guide is my response to that debate. The aim of the project is simple, to provide authors and industry professionals, such as agents, editors, marketers, and other decision makers, with advice and tools on how to tackle the issue of writing diversity into literature in a way that minimizes the chances of causing offense. The project is also aimed at readers, providing useful information about why certain types of book make it to market and about how readers might help in the current drive towards a fairer, more equitable industry. I don't claim to have all of the answers, but I've spent some time researching the subject and interviewed those who have experience of the issues, and I hope that collectively we have some sound advice to offer. These videos and the accompanying guide will cover topics such as tackling cultural misappropriation, the meaning of authenticity, and how to avoid stereotypes. Ultimately, I will offer a checklist of things to look out for when considering the inclusion of characters from diverse backgrounds into fiction. Let's begin by taking a look at the current landscape of diversity in publishing. Diversity in the publishing industry has a very personal meaning for me. I wrote my first novel age 17. I was a huge fan of Terry Pratchett's Discworld series and decided that this writing business looked very straightforward. I penned a sci-fi comic fantasy and sent it off to a handful of agents. Then, with the self-confidence of a teenager, I sat back and waited for the life of riches and fame that I supposed was part and parcel of being a published writer. Of course, instead of a contract, I received my first batch of rejection letters. Over the next 20 odd years, I wrote six more novels and submitted them to virtually every agent in the country, collecting enough rejection letters to wallpaper my bedroom, until finally receiving a four book deal for my first crime series set in India. The interesting thing about that long journey is that only one of those unpublished novels, the last one, featured an Asian or indeed any non-white protagonists. As an avid reader, I had taken on board the idea that books of the type I was trying to write just didn't feature non-white characters. In my mind, I could only hope to be published by writing white characters because those were the sorts of characters readers wanted to read about. Of course, my thoughts on this have changed dramatically in recent years. But let me back up a little. Let's define what we mean by diversity in publishing. In other words, what is it that we're trying to achieve? Firstly, diversity means a broader range of people working within the industry. This helps to change the makeup of the hive mind so that the industry can become more attuned to different voices. Secondly, 
It means publishing more authors from diverse backgrounds. This doesn't just mean authors of color, but also authors from a range of other demographic characteristics, such as gender and class. Thirdly, it means publishing books that feature a more diverse range of characters. And lastly, it means expanding the audience of readers to new and underrepresented communities. This project is not large enough in scale to tackle all of these important dimensions of change. Instead, I will focus primarily on the third of these elements, namely how we, as an industry, can publish more books featuring a wider cast of characters. For me, success in this area hinges on how well we can encourage authors of all backgrounds to feel confident about writing diverse characters into their fiction. This project is aimed at providing advice in this area. Now that we have an idea of what we mean by increased diversity in the publishing industry, it's important for us to reflect on why we want to tackle this issue. The industry makes a lot of money and serves a lot of people. If it's not broken, why fix it? The problem is that the industry doesn't serve everyone equally, whereas books should be for everyone. As I see it, there are several good reasons for making the industry more diverse. Firstly, there is the moral case. If we believe in a fair society, then we must recognize that barriers do exist, whether conscious or unconscious. These barriers disadvantage certain groups from entering the industry and from achieving success once there. It's important to remember that no one wants to be published just for the sake of their ethnicity. Quality will always be important, however we choose to define that. Aligned to this argument is the notion that literature, by representing society, is a powerful means by which we can change society for the better. As individuals, we often formulate our views about the world through artistic media. Thus, when we underrepresent or misrepresent people from minority backgrounds in our artistic output, we run the risk of aiding divisiveness. It has been well documented that children of colour rarely see themselves represented in fiction. They see no positive reinforcement for their identity. I, for one, find that quite troubling. A third reason is that by publishing a more diverse range of characters, we may see a more intriguing range of books. That's not to suggest that the books we currently publish are obsolete or lacking in quality. My favourite books range across the spectrum. Books by white and non-white authors, books featuring white and non-white protagonists. Some stories need to be told from certain cultural perspectives and wouldn't make sense if you shoehorned in a diverse cast of characters for the sake of political correctness. But the fact is that it wasn't until I reached an older age and began to look for more diverse fiction that I began to read such books. They changed my view of what literature could aspire to. My opinion is that if more authors felt confident in writing a wider range of characters, we would see a tangible benefit to readers. An industry based purely on human imagination does itself no favours by setting limits on that imagination. The last reason I'll mention is possibly the most important one, and that is the business case for diversity. The world is changing. A new generation of readers are emerging who are attuned to diversity, who live in a globalised, interconnected world. Similarly, many traditional readers, for want of a better phrase, are increasingly willing to take risks. A market study by Chris McCrudden in 2017 estimated that 11 million readers in the UK alone might be interested in reading books that include diverse content. By recognising that such a potential audience exists, the industry can align itself with readers changing sensibilities. Now that we have some idea of why diversity in publishing might be a good thing, the next question to ask ourselves is, why has the problem persisted for so long? A 2020 report entitled Rethinking Diversity in Publishing examined many of the issues involved. Led by Dr. Anamik Saha and Dr. Sandra Van Lent, the study interviewed over 100 professionals in the industry and highlighted a number of key problems. Firstly, the industry makes assumptions about audiences. One prominent assumption is that white readers won't relate to stories about non-white characters. This is aligned to perhaps the biggest structural problem in the industry, a phenomenon known as comping. In 2018, Laura B. McGrath of Stanford University summarised this issue in an article entitled Comping White, looking at how the practice of comparing new titles to previously published books when publishers acquire new books leads to a lack of diversity. If books featuring white characters written by white authors are the ones making money, then why change the status quo? This attitude works its way up and down the chain. Agents become afraid of taking on books that don't fit this model. What's the point if you can't sell such books to a publisher? At the other end of the chain, booksellers fear that their regular customers won't buy such books. 
It's a vicious cycle. Such books are considered too niche, so very few are published, and thus very few find themselves onto limited bookshelf space. Because they're not published or promoted, they can't reach a wider audience, and thus don't sell, and the perception remains that they're too niche. Literary festivals are also grappling with diversity issues. Most event programmers, both in the real world and online, are reassessing how they select panellists. Carolyn Marston co-runs the UK Crime Book Club. She says that they have actively begun to discuss diversity when programming their annual roster of events. Many other festivals are making similar efforts. I'd like to end this first video on a positive note. My personal opinion is that the publishing industry is making a genuine effort. Talking to people across the industry, I'm convinced that change is an important part of their agenda. While business realities mean that change won't happen overnight, there's no doubt in my mind that publishing output will begin to reflect this changing mindset in a more meaningful way in the coming years. Readers have an incredibly important part to play in this. The industry responds to readers buying choices. If readers are willing to take a chance on books featuring diverse characters, the industry will take heed. In other words, readers can directly contribute to a more level playing field and thus, hopefully, help create a broader canvas for us all to enjoy great books. In the next video, I'll take a look at the thorny topic of cultural appropriation in literature. If you found this video useful, feel free to alert others to this project and to download the written guide that accompanies the series from my website. I would also be extremely grateful if you could spend just three minutes filling out the short feedback survey available on my website at vasimkhan.com, where you will find further resources. Thank you.